Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. On November 2nd, 2011, the United States Supreme Court is going to hear oral arguments in the case of Perry versus New Hampshire. Uh, Perry versus New Hampshire is a case which is coming out of the New Hampshire Supreme Court, and it involves eyewitness identification. Uh, the reason it's tremendously significant is, uh, so far, uh, cases around the country have allowed defendants who are identified by eyewitnesses to attack the identification if they can show that the police officers uh, conducted an investigation in an unnecessarily suggestive way. In other words, if the uh, suspect in a case is a six foot two inch white guy, uh, and in fact in a lineup the police put uh, five people, all, four of whom are five foot three inch white guys, and one is a six two white guy, obviously it unnecessarily suggests who the identification is that the witness should be making. Uh, the, the significance of Perry is in Perry there was an inadvertent identification. The circumstances in Perry were that a, a witness to an offense uh, is looking out the window and identifies a single defendant who was in custody of the police at the point, and she essentially says that's him. It's not the circumstance where the police brought him back to be identified. They had just arrested him, and he was just standing there. Uh, the, the, the issue before the United States Supreme Court is if the police haven't done anything, to cause an unnecessarily suggestive identification, uh, why should uh, the witness not be allowed to come in and identify the alleged offender in the trial? Uh, the reason, at least, that the defense is arguing that they should not be allowed to come in is the issue is not whether the police caused an unnecessarily suggestive identification, but whether there were circumstances where a witness might be misled because somebody is solely in police custody into believing that the person in police custody is the offender. Uh, it potentially leads to misidentifications. And so what's, what's in front of the court is in, in, in 1967, the United States Supreme Court in Wade versus the United States uh, indicated there was skepticism with respect to eyewitness identification testimony. Uh, that case has, has been woven throughout the history since 1967. The court has never, however, addressed the issue of whether or not uh, there should be a preclusion of eyewitness testimony when the police really have done nothing wrong uh, to cause the eyewitnesses to make the identification. Uh, what, what Perry has in front of it this time is whether or not the due process clause uh, should be extended to the defendant, not at the time of the allegedly suggestive identification, but at the time the identification is admitted into court. In other words, if this witness comes into the courtroom and looks around the courtroom and says, that's the guy, uh, she potentially is saying, that's the guy, not because she really recognizes him, but because he was the sole suspect in custody of the police at the time that she looked at the offender. And there's a concern whether or not she's going to be making a misidentification. And what Perry is going to decide is whether or not the due process clause uh, will apply to that potential misidentification when the state seeks to introduce the identification in the courtroom. Uh, historically, up until this point, the due process clause has only been applied to cases where the police intentionally uh, engage in the identification procedures, which courts later determine are unnecessarily suggestive. Here the police did nothing wrong, uh, but the defendant was nevertheless standing in the presence of police alone in a parking lot, uh, which is a perfect opportunity for a witness to make a misidentification. That's what the court's going to be determining.